This is our faithfulness. We're in a season of faithfulness here at Cathedral of Hope, and thank you for faithfully being here this morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. Good morning, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. What a joy to welcome you this morning, and what a wonderful way to be welcomed. Let's give them another round of applause. If you are with us for the first time, we are so excited that you are here. Um, After worship, there is a ministry and visitor center, and if you'd love to join us there, we have a gift for you. We'd just love to get to know you more and, um, and hopefully help you find a place here in this special, special church. We also want to extend a very special welcome to all those who are worshiping online with us this morning. We have people from all over the world, literally, who gather and use Cathedral of Hope as their spiritual portal, their place of worship. And so we want to extend a very special welcome to all those who are worshiping. Let's welcome them, Cathedral of Hope. Welcome. Um, you'll notice in the weekly that there are just a lot of wonderful things going on. I noticed we used the word special a couple times because it is a special Sunday. Really we have is. some lovely guests and wonderful things happening. Um, but I want to call attention on page seven. Um, today is the due date for um, those of you who want to include someone in our All Saints Sunday. That's a time when we honor our saints who have come before. Um, and so this is the information that you need if you want to send a picture and a story. We'd love to include you or your loved one in that special Sunday. Uh, We also have some news that David Hughes, who is a former staff member of ours, has died this morning, and he is definitely one of our saints. And so we just want to extend just heartfelt prayers to his friends and family, and we want to let all of you know um, that he has um, passed on and he is now one of our saints. Yes, he is, and we'll be uh, honoring him next Sunday, but also we'll let you know uh, when we know any details about a memorial service for David's life as we gather. We have many people that we want to welcome, especially this morning. Uh, We want to welcome our guest artist, Dr. Stefan Scoggins, who we'll be hearing from later. Please welcome Dr. Stefan Scoggins. We are uh, excited to be able to introduce you to uh, one of our new associate ministers who will be joining the staff uh, with us on the 1st of November. Please join me in welcoming the Reverend Dr. Michael Diaz. I'm excited. Apparently, I'm not new anymore then. No. Okay. Nor, it's it's official. I, Thank you. So it's Thank all you. done now. It's official. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and um, oh, sorry, we would like to uh, bring up today, this afternoon, from 4 to 6, we have a lovely, wonderful family event um, from the author, author of the book, Mom, I'm Gay, Susan Cottrell. We'd love to bring her up for right now and have her give you a little preview of who she is, of kind of her heart and her ministry. Um, and invite you to come back, invite family and friends. Um, it's appropriate for teenagers. Yes. We'd love to have you come. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Susan Cottrell. I'm really happy to be here, honored to be here. Uh, and to be holding our special Love, Faith, and Family event this afternoon. I'm from Austin, Texas, married to my husband Rob for 29 years. We have five children. Two of them are in the LGBTQI community. So three years straight, but we love them as well. (laughs) We were in the evangelical church for 25 years. We were leaders, and all that changed when our older daughter came out um, six years ago. Then a year later, our youngest daughter came out, so we got in neck deep very quickly. It started us on a journey to discover well, to discover our whole theology on this and led us to be affirming parents, but also fierce advocates and allies because of the pain out there of rejection around this, which is just insane. I'll share all the details of that this afternoon. We started Freed Hearts. We now have a, um, a Facebook groups for moms and dads. We just have a lot of stuff going on. And I wrote Mom, I'm Gay for Parents and True Colors celebrating the truth and beauty of the real you for the LGBTQI community. We just launched Freed Hearts, our full-time online courses, comprehensive full courses. And we free the hearts of parents to unconditionally love their children. And we free the hearts of LGBTQI people to heal from family, religious, and community wounds. 
and we free the hearts of those in the church to radically include and affirm. Love, faith, and family. I hope you'll be there this afternoon. It's at 4 o'clock. I'll tell you what went wrong with love, faith, and family, why it's so off base. <laughs> and um, I hope to see you there. If you're a, if you're a parent, member of an LG, the LGBTQI community, a friend, a family member, an ally, or just someone interested in knowing more, please come this afternoon and take a look at our website. It's freedhearts.org for more information. We do a lot of stuff and have a lot of great resources. Thank you very much to Neil and Aaron for having me, and um, bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. All of the details of this afternoon's uh, conference is on page seven of your weekly, so please do check that out. And I've been following Susan for at least the last year, and she's been doing some amazing work, not just only here in the United States, but just recently come back from Australia, uh, and uh, has really been out there doing this work. So please do come and support her this afternoon and hear more about her. A couple of just very briefly, just want to draw your attention to page eight of your weekly. Uh, please note that next week we begin um, our sign-ups for the Thanksgiving Benevolence. Um, if you've not been here for Thanksgiving, uh, this is a way in which we are able to give back to our community uh, and to provide food for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. It really is a production. We already have over 300 families signed up who want to benefit from our Thanksgiving Benevolence. So uh, this year's participation is really important. So please do check out the information on page eight. And then on November the 5th, uh, Cathedral Couples will be having their Thanksgiving uh, and Halloween uh, event. So if you are a couple, uh, we, we have other things for other folks, but if you're a couple uh, and want to gather <laughs> together, please check out Cathedral Couples. Uh, there's going to be a photo booth and opportunities to have uh, uh, pictures done so that you can use them for perhaps holiday cards, whatever it is that you want to use that for. Uh, but uh, please do check out Cathedral Couples and their event on November the 5th. How many of you are excited to be here this morning? And let's share that excitement as we now rise in hope and greet one another in Jesus' name.
us pray. Oh God, we come before you to hear the words you have for us today. Transform our hearts. Help us to change, to be the people that you have called us to be. Send your spirit. May she have her way with us this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our epistle lesson is from the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Hear these words. I'm glad in God, far happier than you would ever guess, happy that you're again showing such strong concern for me. Not that you ever quit praying and thinking about me, you just had no chance to show it. Actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with little as with much, with much as with little. I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. I don't mean that your help didn't mean a lot to me, it did. It was a beautiful thing that you came alongside me in my troubles. May God bless the hearing of these ancient words. Amen. It really is good and pleasing to be in God's house and to welcome God's Spirit within us as we gather as community, as friends, to seek out friendship and fellowship and connection with each other. Worship is indeed a process. It is one that takes us on a journey, and part of that journey is to center ourselves with thanksgiving. So as we have sung and shared and heard the choir this morning to remind us that all things are bright and beautiful, that not one of us is a mistake, 
and that we too are part of that beautiful and wonderful creation that God has made manifest in us. So we come now in this season of faithfulness to give thanks this morning as we pray. So let's take that attitude of prayer and thanksgiving as we ask God to bless us this day, but not with a selfish blessing, with a blessing that reminds us that we have something to bless others with. Let us pray. God, we come before you with our sense of thanksgiving and with gratitude. We thank you for the way in which you manifest yourselves in our lives, and through us we become the embodiment of Christ in the world. As a church, O oh God, we have been celebrating together this season of faithfulness, reminding us always of your faithfulness to us, and from that place we give back to you. Over this last week, we have been mindful of the many ways in which people offer themselves, their gifts and their talents to this congregation. Yesterday, we welcomed home Paul and Richard, who came to celebrate their marriage amongst us. Thank you for that commitment that they made to one another and bless them as they return now to their new home in Chicago. Thank you for their gifts that they have given to Cathedral over many years, and we bless them in this new life together. Yesterday, we also celebrated the ordination of Reverend Bobby Cates, who comes amongst us as a volunteer associate pastor working specifically with those with disabilities. Help us, O oh God, to be that radically inclusive place to know that all of us have a seat at the table, and that regardless of who we are and where we are and what we are, you created us all things bright and beautiful. Today we will say goodbye to Larry Goodman, who has faithfully served this congregation for many, many years. Larry has worked for 38 years in this, the Cathedral of Hope, and today will be leaving us to begin a new phase of his journey following his retirement. It's said in my notes here this morning that Larry is a master geek, extremely knowledgeable of all things technological. Thank Jesus that someone is. <laughs> His home, indeed, is a better wired than most community centers, and he is the ultimate source of information even for those who consider themselves geeky. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless Larry in his new life, in his retirement, working in the technology department at Dallas ISD, and enable him, O oh God, to feel and know the blessing one of the things that we hear regularly from people here at Cathedral of Hope when they find themselves having to leave Dallas is that one of the hardest decisions is leaving Cathedral of Hope. So may we bless you, Larry, this morning, and thank you for your volunteer work amongst us. As shared in our gathering, we mourn the passing of David Hughes. And now, O oh God, remind us that David, even though he is out of sight, is never out of mind, and that he assembles now in that great cloud of witness that gather amongst us this morning as we worship. It is with that sense of faithfulness and gratitude, O oh God, that we come now in the fullness of ourselves to worship, to honor, and to give thanks. So bless our hearts. Help us, O oh God, to reveal to you the innermost beings of ourselves so that you might transform us as we transform the world. To the honor and glory of God and in your many names we pray. Amen.
God be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus continued teaching the crowds, saying, Therefore, I will tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will God not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is those without faith who strive for all these things, and indeed God knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the realm of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the gospel of God. Praise you. you to be seated, and if you would again open your hearts and your minds this morning as we ask God to bless this word, let us pray. Almighty, holy, and sovereign one, you who are with us because we have invited your presence into this place. And so it is with that invitation that we stand now on holy ground, holiness that is created because we have come wholly and fully into your presence. So open us, O God, now so that we might hear you, respond to you, and direct the ways of this church and this community. Allow us, O God, to be immersed in your Holy Spirit so that she might have her way amongst us and lead us in the way, the truth, and the life. And so, God, now I pray that you would touch my lips of clay. Mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I said at the beginning of worship, we're in the midst of a sermon series here at Cathedral of Hope called Faithfully. And over the last few weeks, we've been talking about how God's faithfulness is paramount to us in our faith journey and how paramount it is to us in our experience of God's self in our lives. I think we shared right at the very beginning of this sermon series that reality that God invites us to know God's faithfulness in our lives. And if we would just take a look and uh, inventory of our own lives, perhaps we would see over and over again God's faithfulness to us, reminding us that God is with us always in the good times and in the not-so-good times. That the journey of faith is a journey that enables us to see God's presence vividly and creatively and wonderfully. And sometimes that is in the great majestic of God's miracles, and sometimes it's in the hands friendships that we establish in communities here at church. 
The way in which we see God's faithfulness isn't always in the way that we share it from our ancestors' perspective, but enables us always to know that God is a faithful God, a God that is constantly with us. There is a promise that is given to us in the great commission and commandment of Jesus that I will be with you always. God never promised us a rose garden, but God did indeed promise us that God would be with us. On that first Sunday, we shared that poem, The Footprints, that reminds us that at times when we look back in our lives and we think that we're on our own, it's at those times that perhaps God has been more faithful than ever, lifting us up and encouraging us on our way. Faithfulness, faithfully, that God that is faithful toward us and is with us always. It is from that sense of faithfulness and that sense of knowing God's presence in our lives that we move swiftly to being reminded that, that, that God invites us, therefore, to come with a place of sense of gratitude and with thanksgiving. And we challenged one another on that Sunday to be reminded that if we could just enter into every day with a sense of thanksgiving and with a sense of gratitude, what our lives might do in the transformation of them in peace. So often we enter into a, a new day with a, a list of, uh, of things that we have to do. Instead of perhaps starting with a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving, and perhaps if you think you have nothing to be grateful for or thankful for, perhaps the thing that we could be grateful for this morning is that God got us up this morning and got us here for our nine o'clock service. <laughs> for some of us, that is a great challenge. Being grateful to this God, sensing our gratitude and affording God that blessing. I believe that when we change our attitude, our lives change. That if we were truly to come at all of our life circumstances with just the sense of where is the blessing in the midst of it all, we might be able to transform ourselves. Now, I know that for some of us that's much easier than others. I'm a person that really sees everything half full than half empty, and that is no criticism of anybody else. I speak only for myself. But I tend to always see things from a place of where is the blessing to be found? Where is it that I can see God's hand in the midst of it all? Last week, we talked about faithfully being, and we celebrated the fact that here at Cathedral of Hope, we just don't aren't an open and affirming church. We're an open and celebrating church, that we want to celebrate people wherever they are on life's journey and celebrating all that they are. We called forth within ourselves the very best of our authenticity and invited us, if you would remember, if you were here last Sunday and if you were the first time visitor, then perhaps this is an inside thing, but I'll just tell you anyway. We shared the nursery, the nursery rhyme. We put our whole selves in and our whole selves out. In, out, in, out, and we shake it all about. I call it the hokey cokey. I think you call it the hokey pokey. But whatever it is that we call it, it is about reminding us that we've been called to bring our whole selves to the table. So many places in our world we're invited to leave parts of us at the door, the things that perhaps others don't see as respectable. But God invites us to bring our whole selves in and to allow the transparency, the authenticity of who we are to be the celebration of the gift that God created in each and every one of us. What a journey that we have been on on these last few weeks, and we have two more weeks to go. Oh, what a journey we will still have together. Today we come to honor this God who has brought all of this into fruition into our lives, now to invite us to faithfully live to faithfully live in our fullness, and to faithfully live into the experience of God's abundance and blessing. It's not always easy for us to live into God's fullness and into God's blessing in our lives, but the invitation of Scripture this morning is to find that place within ourselves that we can faithfully live. We've been celebrating this morning people who have faithfully lived and who have faithfully given all of themselves to this great place. Larry, who will be leaving us this week, celebrating 38 years of ministry here at Cathedral of Hope. That's longer than many relationships last. 
38 years of faithfully living. David Hughes, who passed away this morning, but who faithfully lived his life within this great cathedral of hope, offering himself to the great commission of Jesus. And I believe that David receives his reward this day as he now rests in peace, out of pain, and in the loving arms of a grateful God who says to him, welcome home, good and faithful servant. Scripture reminds us that to be absent from the body is to be present with our God. And I don't know about you, but when my time comes, hopefully not too soon, I will celebrate the fact that this God who has faithfully journeyed with me has faithfully welcomed me home. But in the meantime, there is much work for us to do, much work for us to faithfully live and to faithfully bring ourselves into the ministry of Christ. The Scripture reading this morning reminded us that we are called not to be worrying about tomorrow, but to know that today has enough worries of its own. Who of us can change the outcomes of tomorrow by worrying about it? And so the Scripture reminds us that we are called not to worry about what we will eat or what we will drink or what we will do or who we will be, but rather to be present in this moment. It's hard for us to be present in a moment. There are so many things that cause us distractions in our lives. Perhaps some of us are worried about what's going to happen in three weeks' time here in the United States of America, and we're worrying about what's going to be. Perhaps some of us are worrying about where we will live or what we will eat or where brunch is going to be today after the nine o'clock service. I'm sure that there are a list of places that we could go to. Scripture reminds us this day in the gospel story that we should not worry about tomorrow or worry about these things, but rather to be in this present moment. I don't know about you, but there's no better place that I would want to be on a Sunday morning than here at Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Now, of course, I have to be here, (laughs) although perhaps I don't. But to be present means that we bring all of ourselves and to faithfully live this moment to faithfully live knowing that we have offering to give to this place and to this community in which we share. This season of faithfully giving, faithfully living, this season of generosity is about reminding us of our personal responsibility to be in the moment and to be with our sisters and brothers building what is this cathedral of hope not just the bricks and mortar of this church, but what it is that we do in the world and in the community, how we bring this gospel to life as we embody the presence of Christ in our lives, not just on Sunday morning at nine o'clock for this hour, but beyond the hour into the everyday living experience of our lives, how we truly represent who it is that God is making us and creating us to be to know that we can cast our cares and all of our worries upon the God who is faithful. And from that place, we faithfully live, not always knowing the outcomes, not always knowing the plan, not always following the strategic plan of a congregation, but, but knowing that somehow God is in the midst of it all and that God will work it out if we would but faithfully live. I know for myself that when I try to make things happen, they don't. But if I would faithfully live and faithfully rely on this God who has been faithful to me, somehow things work themselves out. Anyone else have that witness and experience this morning in your own lives? You can talk back to the preacher at nine o'clock. It really is okay. (laughs) It helps me know that you're still there faithfully living sisters and brothers and giving of ourselves. Here at Cathedral of Hope, we have been reminded that in this new season of our church, we are not only a church that has been founded in the LGBT community, but we are a congregation that is moving beyond the LGBT community to a place where all people get a place at the table. And I don't know about you, but that excites me so much about where Cathedral of Hope is going in the days and months and years to come. To know that this table that was set first for us is a table that we now get to set for the rest of the world. Our mission 
to reclaim Christianity for Dallas and the rest of the world. And you might ask how on earth we do that, but we do that through the way in which we broadcast our worship services on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And we're reaching now more than 100 countries and over 70,000 people watch Cathedral of Hope as a part of their spirituality. Sisters and brothers, you get to make that happen here every Sunday as we faithfully live our lives. What a joy, but what a great responsibility that God has given to us that we might faithfully live this good news of Jesus the gifts and talents that each and every one of you bring to this place on a weekly and daily basis makes a difference in the world. And just this week, we will begin to move our benevolence ministries of our church into Dallas Hope Charities, which is a new form of 501c3 that we've established as our congregation in order that we might expand our territory and expand the good works that we are doing here at Cathedral of Hope, not just through eye care on Mondays and breakfast at Cathedral of Hope on Saturdays, but through our helping baskets, our blessing bags that we do on Wednesdays, and folks in the congregation get to take those in their cars and issue them to the homeless in our community, but through our work with uh, helping people in the career assistance program and getting people back to work and writing new and creative CVs that will make an impact. Great work that we are doing here at Cathedral of Hope and yet more that is yet to come. I look forward to seeing how our benevolence ministries expand within our congregation, not just to bless us, but to know that we are blessing this world. Isn't that what faithfully living is all about? Is to know that the blessing that God has given us is a blessing that we get to share with everybody else. That there is an abundance that pours out of our lives if we would but stay present knowing that this God that we worship will clothe us, feed us, love us, and embrace us. From that place of gratitude, we come to be of service. This season of faithfulness should challenge us to cast all that we have upon this God that we worship. And through that, we are able to give back, not holding on to it ourselves, but knowing that quite honestly, if we hold on too tightly, then there is no room for us to find new blessing. But if we would but let go of the blessings that we have been given and share them around, there is yet more that God wants to lavish upon us. That scarcity mentality needs to be eradicated from the Christian church. We are a people of abundance and blessing and anointing, so much so that God says we do not need to worry about how we will be fed, for there is enough to go around. Now, of course, that means our cooperation. Because if we do hold on to it ourselves, then it is hard to share it with others. It is that social gospel, that gospel of justice, that reminds us that we must always allow those blessings to flow from us. Last night, I tried to put Sophia to sleep. Sophia is my two-year-old. She did not really want Daddy to put us to sleep. She really wanted Papa to do it, but it fell on me for my responsibility. And so I asked Isaiah, how do you normally put Sophia to sleep? Because often I am still here at Cathedral of Hope when Sophia goes to bed. And he said, well, you ask her what books she wants to read. I didn't know that Sophia could tell me what books she wants to read. <laughs> she wanted to read two books, My Two Daddies, and chicka chicka boom boom. <laughs> so we read those two books. And then I said to Isaiah, so what is the next thing that you do? And he said, then we say our prayers. Not bad for a preacher's kid. <laughs> and so we, I said to Sophia, so shall we pray? And she put her hands up like this. Oh, it was so cute. <laughs> and we began to pray. And as I began to pray with her, I began to pray about the blessing that she is in my life and the blessing that she is to this congregation. 
And, and through those blessings, I, I asked God to protect her during the night and then in the morning to allow the blessings to flow out of her into this world. I tell you, it was an amazing experience. We finished our prayers and turned off the lights, and she wouldn't go to sleep. <laughs> and so I eventually had to yield to Papa to come and finally put her to sleep. See, I'm not good at everything. <laughs> I believe, Cathedral of Hope, that we are building a church for the generations that come after us. And to know that Sophia, as she comes amongst us, and all of the new folks who come amongst us, they come amongst us as an open and celebrating church where all the blessings that we have been given are able to flow out of us and into the world. And to see that transformation so that we need not worry so much about our own lives, but worry enough about the lives of those who are less fortunate than ourselves and to enable all of this world to find the abundance of God's grace that we have found for ourselves this day, and to further the mission of this cathedral, to be a place where we reclaim Christianity, and to reframe it in such a way that people will see the good news of Jesus, not good news with borders and boundaries, but that radically inclusive good news that God welcomed us and we have been called to welcome others, wherever they are on their spiritual journeys. At the 11 o'clock service, we're going to be welcoming new members to our congregation. We have 50 new members joining Cathedral of Hope this morning. 50 new members. Eight of those folks will be baptized. Now, in the last class, which was Reverend Aaron's first class, she often reminds me there was double that number. <laughs> but over this past year, we would have welcomed over 200 members to Cathedral of Hope. And this class will be the last of 2016. <laughs> now, one of the ways in which we make transformation is engaging those people in ministry and enabling those folks to find their place at the table, just as we did. What has been interesting over this last year is watching the vision that we spoke into the universe coming to truth. And the last two classes of our membership class have probably been some of the most diverse classes that we've witnessed here at Cathedral of Hope in quite some time. And this particular last class, we will be welcoming many, many straight members amongst our church. <laughs> Two of those folks are with us this morning at nine o'clock because I invited them to share their testimony with us as a way of reminding us, Cathedral of Hope, that we are moving beyond and moving out and moving within this world so that we might be that place of radical inclusion and to ensure that we are on the path together. So I'm going to invite you to welcome uh, Jack and Lords as they come forward this morning. And please welcome them. They'll be coming into membership at 11 o'clock this morning. And so I've asked them to share just their testimony with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. By way of introduction, uh, we are both retired federal law enforcement officers. Okay. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah. Operative word is retired. Yeah. And we've lived in the Dallas area for about five years and tried a number of different churches, and none of them really met our spiritual and social needs. And as fate would have it, on the week after the Orlando massacre, I was in the car listening to KERA and heard Pastor Neil being interviewed. And I rushed home and uh, walked in the house and told Lourdes, I said, honey, 
I heard this wonderful pastor on the radio, and I think it might be the right church for us. Yeah? And he spoke of uh, inclusion. Okay? He spoke of unconditional love and acceptance. And I really think we ought to try the, the, uh, his church. And Lourdes looked at me and said, good, what was the name of the church? And I said, I don't remember. <laughs> she said, well, what was the name of the pastor? I said, he was Reverend somebody. <laughs> and she took over at that point, okay? <laughs> did her due diligence, and found all the answers to those questions. And we decided to attend the 11 o'clock service that following Sunday. And as we arrived uh, in the area, uh, the navigation lady said, you have arrived at your destination. And we couldn't see the church. All we saw were police cars and yellow tape. We eventually found a place to park on the grass and walked over to where we saw a group of people milling about. And we saw three rows of white plastic chairs. So we, as newcomers, did the predictable thing. We sat in the last row. Yeah. <laughs> and after about 30 seconds, realized that there were ants crawling up the chairs and our legs. And I thought to myself, I don't remember that wonderful pastor mentioning we'd be sitting out in the Texas sun being devoured by fire ants. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, one of the ushers approached, gave us uh, bottles of water, and explained that there had been a bomb threat. And that shortly, we expected the building to be cleared and we'd be able to come into the sanctuary. And as we walked in, the greeting we got was overwhelming. The greeters, the ushers, the, the folks that we sat next to. Uh, and then the, as the service began, you know, the music was concert quality. Uh, the liturgy was absolutely in our comfort zone. Uh, Pastor Neil's sermon got him elevated back onto the wonderful list. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the invitation to come to the table. Uh, when the service was over, we knew that we had found a home spiritually and socially. And so we stand here this morning. We stand here this morning to say, thank you, Lord, for bringing us home. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Cathedral of Hope, for the welcome that you have given us. Thank you. Folks, this is the church called Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ faithfully living out what it is that God calls us to be. This morning, as you will know, next Sunday we will be receiving our pledges for 2017. This has been an incredible year for us at Cathedral of Hope. Incredible year of blessing and witness and ministry, and 2017 offers to be even better than this. But it will be better because we are all giving of ourselves faithfully because of the generosity that God has already shown to us. I don't usually call for the offering, but I will be this morning because I want to encourage you to prayfully consider your pledge for 2017 as we prepare to make that pledge next Sunday. Now, I realize for those of you who are new amongst us, you, some of the complaints are the church always speaks about money. I want you to know that here at Cathedral of Hope, we always talk about the outcomes to the gifts that we give to this church. And so in preparation for next Sunday, I'm going to invite you over this week to prayerfully consider your gift to Cathedral of Hope, not just in your time and talent, but yes, in your finances. There are many, many things that we are yet to be called to do to reach out to people like Jack and Lourdes to reach out to the young, homeless, young men and women who are at risk, to
to reach out into our world so that we might be the cathedral of hope that is truly making a difference in Dallas and the world and welcoming people home to a spiritual place wherever they are on their spiritual journeys. That is the kind of faithfulness that God is calling us to. And because we live in the real world, that all takes money, lots of it. And I know that you are a generous congregation, a generous people. And so I'm inviting you to think, consider, and prayerfully ask God what God is leading you to offer next Sunday as a way in which we as the board of stewards will be able to direct the budget and to enable us to do the great things that I know you want to do. We are stronger together. I said that before somebody else did. <laughs> I think we are also better together. And if we would allow ourselves not to worry so much and faithfully live in preparation for next Sunday as we faithfully give, of course, if I look out next Sunday and see only half the congregation here, I'll know I made a mistake. <laughs> and before you remind me, next Saturday night is uh, Halloween down on the Strip. So uh, you might want to get to bed early to make sure you're here for 9 o'clock service <laughs> next week. Prayerfully consider, sisters and brothers, but let us not withhold anything from the abundance of the blessing that God is ready to pour out through us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Lord, I know you've got me where you want me. And I know you are molding me. Lord, I know my soul needed saving so that I can have the victory. And I thank you, Jesus.
season, we sing what is becoming one of my favorite gradual hymns, ancient words, ever new, changing me and changing you. And I thought about that also describes communion for us. Ancient meal, ever new, changing me and changing you. We celebrate communion, this great sacrament, not only because Jesus told us to do, and we do what Jesus tells us to do, but because we come to it each Sunday different, and we come to it with the expectation that not only will Christ meet us at this meal, but that we will be changed, we will be made new. And so on that night, when Jesus was with his disciples, he did two important things. He gave them a new commandment and said, love one another. That is your calling card, Christians. Love one another. And then when they were in the middle of the meal, getting towards the end, he took the piece of bread that they were eating and he blessed it and he gave thanks for it and he broke it. And then he passed it around to each and every person there and said, this is my body. This is who I am. I'm passing on who I am to you. Take it and be made new. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks for it. And he reminded them that it represented his very life essence. And he passed it around so that each one of them would taste and see the goodness and the grace of God and that they would take that within themselves and be made new. My prayer today for you is that as you come to this meal, you are made new. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, send the power of your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of grape and grain, Make them be for us holy food that nurtures us in body and spirit, that by sharing this feast, we may know the presence of the living Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world. Through Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours now and forever. Amen. As the lay ministers of worship come to prepare a place for you, I remind you that this is a table, not of the church, but of Jesus Christ. You do not have to be a member of this church or any other church in order to have communion here. We celebrate an open communion. So as the ushers come forward and direct you, please come.
faithfulness. We are a testimony to your greatness, O oh God. May our lives, may our lives be that testimony to your love and your grace. And may our lives transform a world through love. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. to God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given and the blessing of God known to us as Creator Savior and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore amen, amen. go in peace amen.